and coach Jacob Peeler, wide receiver coach at Missouri. Coach, can you hear me? I can. Can you hear me, guys? Man, I can hear you. First off, man, thanks for thanks for hopping on. I know you know your guys' schedule, especially at that level, is absolutely nuts, and we appreciate you joining us this morning. And you know, coach, I, I want to start. You know, obviously, with you guys in Missouri coming off a huge year last year, you know, y'all have totally flipped the script there. I know people are really excited. Can you just talk about the level of excitement right now at Missouri? Not only you know throughout the fan base. But you guys as coaches and players behind closed doors, how excited you are to get out and build on that big year last year, especially the way that it ended. Yeah, obviously, um, you know, coming off of, of a Cotton Bowl win and 11 wins, um, you know, I, every year is a new year, right? You're always mm-hmm. trying to figure out your team and figure out what you're, what you're going to have, you know. And again, just to kind of recap, last year, obviously, we were able to stay healthy in some key areas, which was huge. And, and obviously, um, you know, win some close games. Um, you know, the Kansas State game hitting the, the 61-yard field goal. Yeah. Um, you know, Florida, you know, able to, you know, win that one at the very end with a, with a kick. And, you know, we converted a fourth and 17, um, you know, at the very end there to – to win a couple close games down the stretch, I think that's always, you know, a belief thing too. You start to win some of those close games where you, you know, look, rewind a, a year before we lost, a, you know, several mm-hmm. close ones. So, you know, that part is is going to be a huge, you know, huge part of your your success, your success right? Um, but no, from from you know last year, obviously, uh, you know, not not to be coach speak, but you know, again, you're. New year, you got, you know, a new group of guys. We, we lost six guys to the NFL draft, uh, which was tremendous, you know, for those guys and for our program. And, and just showing, to your point, the direction that, that we're headed in, under Coach Drink. And, um, but, you know, again, we got some big pieces to fill. But, you know, again, we're excited about the opportunity, you know, to see what this group can do. So, um, you know, we got some really important pieces back, offensively especially, and, you know, even even on the other side of the ball as well. But, you know, I'm excited to see what these guys can do this year. And, and Coach, you know, at the position that you coach, wide receiver, everybody thinks, obviously, you know, catching the ball, getting it to Luther Burden, watching him run what looks like 400 miles per hour on the field and everybody else is in mud. But I think one of the things that, that separates you guys and your position group is y'all's ability to do everything, right? It's the blocking on the outside. It's understanding the coverage that you're getting in front of you, how to stem guys, right? It's it's the little things. Can you just talk about, you know, how you approach, yeah, catching the ball's fun, scoring touchdowns is fun, making the one-hand catch is fun, but it's the stuff on the outside that turns 20-yard runs into 70-yard runs and putting, you know, Brady Cook and the guys in that quarterback room in the best position to be able to have everything available. Can you just talk about the things on the periphery? Because I don't think people talk about that enough. Yeah, uh, obviously, I mean, you hit the nail on the head there. Um, you know, for us, we call it, you know, back to basis, essentially. The things that that doesn't take talent, it just takes want to and yeah. and basically desire. Um, you know, for us, we we have the saying, you know, no block, no rock. And, and you know, for us last year, you know, there were some opportunities, especially early. I'm going to be honest, like, you know, you saw the stretch uh, of Cody Schrader down, down, you know, at the end of the year where he was playing out of his mind, uh, our running back. Well, you know, at the early in the year, we had some opportunities to to spring him on some bigger plays, and and you know, I challenged my guys uh, to your point, like you, you, we gotta we gotta be, you know, obviously from an unselfish standpoint, but we, you know, the gift of the game is perimeter blocking and being able mm-hmm. to, you know, do our job out there to spring a you know a five or six yard run that may turn into a fifty five yard touchdown run, and I really, you know, down the stretch, our guys really really started buying into that mindset and you saw, uh, you know, some explosive runs that were starting to happen on the perimeter. But, you know, for us, uh, again, it's, it's, it's the foundation pieces. It's not always the, uh, you know, probably lack of better term, the sexy stuff. It's, it's yeah. the, just getting down and, 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 you know, doing whatever the job, you know, it, it, it entails. And so we got a really unselfish group. Um, I'm fortunate, you know, we were able to bring in, um, you know, a guy by the name of Theo Weiss from the University of Oklahoma yeah. and just an, an old savvy vet. You know, he, um, you know, he, he kind of was mentored by C.D. Lamb, uh, who's now with the Cowboys. And obviously he, he, he got to see how to do it. And I, I just I had a young group and I needed somebody that could come in and do that. And I think he kind of showed the way uh, we in our program. Coach Drinks talks about doing more than what's expected. And that's the stuff when 
like that you just don't see on Saturdays. That's the stuff you're doing at 6 a.m. on Mondays and yeah. 5.30s on Fridays. And, and I think just those guys and the time they put in to do that and the little nuances like you talked about, the whether it's releases, whether it's stems, whether it's top of the route, um, all the little details that come into a play and make a, you know, make a an, an average play into a great play. Those are the things that you work on, you know, this time of year when we're not even around and you and you got a, a veteran group that's done it and seen, you know, the good and the bad. It's always helpful to have, you know, multiple coaches within the room. Uh, when your players are coaching each other up, you know, you got a chance to be successful. And that's what we kind of saw last year was just mm-hmm. an unselfish group, but also a group that was willing to be coachable and not always just want to hear what they did well, but they wanted to know how they could be better. Yeah. No block, no rock. Coaches have the, the best sayings ever. I and and I think, you know, unselfish is the word he used. And and coach, you know, you know obviously what I think of you and how much respect I have for you, but I think that's the best compliment. And Blaine, you know, you played the position, you played the wide receiver position. The best compliment you can give a wide receiver coach is to go out there and for lack of a better term, block your ass off and do yeah. the stuff that's not sexy. Like it's like effort. That's about. all it is. It's effort and want to. Exactly. Like, like there's nothing better than selflessness as a receiver. Yeah. I really believe that. Go yeah. Ahead. Coach, you had the great fortune to help develop A.J. Brown and D.K. Metcalf both while at Ole Miss, and those guys are just playing at such an elite level in the NFL. Do you have any good stories for us or maybe some fun facts that people in the public may not know about those guys? Yeah, um, I mean, obviously had a a great opportunity. Got to spend um, three years with them um, and just getting to see them grow and, and, you know, come in as 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 kids essentially. And, and, you know, just again, DK was actually on, on our campus probably it was last month. Um, we had our pro day and he flew in. Um, so obviously, you know, just the relationship piece is, is one of the biggest things. Those guys just, they trusted each other and they trusted me. And it was just a lot, like said in that room, but you know, those guys, they were, they were pros from day one. And I, one, one story that really sticks out to me, um, we had played 11 a.m. kick, um, and I can't remember the opponent, but, you know, sometimes you get that that SEC network at 11 a.m., and mm-hmm. you always worry about your guys. We stayed about 45 minutes away, our team hotel, from the uh, from the stadium. It was a home game. And so you're always worried about just starting fast. And, and um, you know, DK actually had one of his better games uh, for that season. I think he had 100-something yards, a touchdown, made a tremendous catch. Um, but I always remember he had a drop, right? And that's the kid that, that I knew at that point that the kid was different. Um, so I'm, I'm at my house. It's probably about five or six o'clock at night and I'm just watching college football like everybody else does. You know, we won the game. And so just getting to relax a little bit, watch everybody else stress out, uh, you know, play their games at night. And I get a text message from DK and he said, Hey coach, are you at home? And so I just pick up the phone and call him immediately. I'm thinking, yeah. okay, Saturday night, we just Uh-oh. won home game. Something's wrong, <laughs> right? And and he, I just call him, pick up the phone and call him. And he's like, no, everything's good. He said, um, do you care if I get your ID? Because our indoor, they shut it off. You had to have, you know, had to have access through uh, a key card. And they shut it off. And, you know, I was able to open it up. And he asked for my key card. So he had a drop that day. And he went up there about 6, 6.30 at night on a Saturday and just caught jugs by himself Man. because he had a drop that day. Mm-hmm. And different. that, again, that, and this is, we're talking about a, wow. a redshirt freshman, you know, um, trying to do the little things like that. And, you know, ultimate pro um, where guys, again, they don't see that stuff. They, they see the flashy stuff on Saturdays, but they don't see the work and the, you know, the things that it takes to be great. And, you know, another thing that it always sticks out was, um, you know, every Sunday night we play on Saturdays and on Sunday nights we would do a team meal. Well, that group, they would come in, they grab their food and they would come into the, the wide receiver room. And all they would do was watch, you know, their favorite NFL guys like Julio Jones. A.J. Brown was a huge Julio Jones fan. And so we had all these cut ups, these NFL cut ups and these NFL highlights, you know, and wh- whether it was YouTube or whatever it may be. But again, those guys just they were eating up with the process. They were eating up yeah. with just not trying to be the best version of themselves, but just honestly trying to be great. Um, but they were, they were pros way before they were pros in terms of their approach and day to day. You didn't really have to, you know, when you're a receiver and, and, you know, you run all day, every day, um, sometimes you have to poke the bear to get them going a little bit, yeah. but those guys, they, they literally, they brought it, they brought it, man. And, um, you know, obviously the success that they've had, you know, AJ's just signed that, 
that new deal uh, on draft night to be the highest paid receiver in the history of the game. I mean, things like that is, is so cool for your, you know, for me as, as, as a former coach, for a guy that's their fan now to get to sit back and watch the mm-hmm. success. But, you know, I'll, again, I'll be the first to say I was very fortunate, um, you know, to get to coach those guys and, you know, to see them be successful is awesome for me. Well, that's awesome. Attitude reflects leadership. And, I mean, you put that type of want to in the, the physical freak yeah. show bodies those guys yeah. have, that's uh, – it, hell's coming with you. Yeah, I agree. And, Coach, something, where does Luther Burden rank among those guys, in your opinion? Yeah, you know, Luther um, – Man, obviously, uh, tremendous, tremendous player, tremendous kid. Um, you know, he he is he, as a coach. You know, sometimes you you always hear about competitive character, and and you know, for for Luther, the thing that he does, man, he, I mean, you you see a kid that is is pretty quiet, right? Like throughout the week, yeah, he's about his business. He he's not he's not the most loud vocal guy maybe in the room, uh, you know, even sometimes on the practice field, I mean, he's going to do his work and, and, um, super quiet. And then all of a sudden on game day, man, it's like he morphs into a, I don't know. It's just like this, this, this freak show kid, man. Like, I mean, he really does. Like he just, he just has that competitive character that is, that is off the charts and you get to see the, 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 the yards after catch, the things that he does so well, you know, for him, that was one thing going back to AJ, um, you know, AJ was so gifted at, after the catch. Um, I used to kind of compare him like to an old school running back. And that's what Luther does. I mean, you get the ball in Luther's hands and you better watch out. I mean, it's, he has that refusal for the first guy to make the tackle. Um, You know, we make that, we make that a big point in our, in our room. We say there's no rule in football that the first guy has to tackle you mm-hmm. and we challenge our guys every year and every day to you know to work on their yaks and, and yards after catch but he is so tremendous with the ball in his hands and has progressed obviously as a true freshman you know it's hard to play in this league i mean you're gonna see a ton of press coverage and i mean you're going against grown men right mm-hmm. like i mean first round draft picks every single day uh even in practice like I mean, we had two corners that were drafted this last year and and it's hard to play wide out uh, especially early in the career, that's what guys struggle with the most is just getting off a of press consistently. And, you know, we, we threw him to the fire as a true freshman. Um, and, you know, he had his struggles like everybody does, and he had success along the way too. And I think that was really good for him to just have to persevere through that. And then obviously this last year we moved him to, uh, moved him to the slot. And, uh, you know, he really took off. And, again, just a tremendous kid, um, you know, again, a guy that, 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 just loves the work and and you know you're seeing a you know seeing that product on Saturdays man that play against Kansas State where he just um, angles don't exist for this you know it's mm-hmm. it's you look at like Hollywood Brown some of these smaller wide receivers that are you know Xavier Worthy that's incredibly fast Luther Burden is not small and he is I, I can't wait to see what he runs at the combine because it's going to be player, incredible man. coach I I know you got to run here in a second I do got to ask you it looks a whole heck of a lot of fun to be able to coach under a guy like Eli Drinkwitz, it seems like you guys get after it. Obviously, you guys are, are you know, uh, emotional about winning, but you handle it the right way. Can you just talk about being able to coach with a guy like like Coach Drink and how much fun that's got to be? Yeah, uh, man, Coach Drink is, first off, a uh, tremendous leader. Um, you know, again, I, 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 owe, I owe a ton to him. You know, he, he took a chance on me and not to get too sentimental, but he took a chance on a guy. Ultimately, he didn't know. Um, you know, he had gotten my name, and you know, we both probably on, on blind faith, and uh, you know, went in that went on that journey together. But what a what a tremendous leader. Um, you know, again, a guy that is that that just knows how to to rally the troops. And I mean, again, uh, you see the products that you saw last year in the yeah. growth and the development of our team and the culture. Uh, is, is a testament to him. Um, you know, he is a tremendous person outside of being a tremendous coach, extremely smart. Um, you know, again, the guys really uh, respond to him. And, and you know, the, I think at, at in our, our level, and especially in today's world of college football, you know, uh, transparency and, and ability to to admit, you know, that that this deal is, is, is in sync with each other. It's not about mm-hmm. what we say. It's about doing it together and, and being open to, to listening to the team. I think that's something that, that stands out. Like he, he has open dialogue and, you know, he allows the, the team to have a voice. And, you know, if you earn that opportunity, he gives, he gives a ton of, of ton of, um, 
um, I'm linking the word, but it basically gets – he he gives a lot of ownership to the to the team yeah. and the leaders and allows them to speak and and that's something I think that 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 stands out about him is just his ability to to do that. But obviously he has uh, done a tremendous job at the University of Missouri you know since he was hired and obviously last year was a was a great uh, product of that. Yeah, well, you guys uh, look like you're having a whole heck of a lot of fun, yeah, and yeah. It's, it's a whole heck of a lot of fun when you're winning too, Coach. You know, typically I tell guests thanks for getting up with us. But I know the business you're in, you've been up yeah. working for a couple yeah. hours already. So I appreciate you <laughs> taking some time with us this morning, man. Best of luck. You know we're rooting for you guys over there. And, and oh, again, yeah. thanks so much for joining us. And, you know, I'll, I guess I'll see you at the Jake convention later in the year. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> appreciate you for having me, man. Absolutely. And, uh, uh, yeah, anything y'all need from me, reach out. Appreciate it. One of the best Coach in the Peter! business. Coach Peter! Coach Peter at Missouri. You can see you get a little insight into why Missouri's doing the things that they're doing. Hey, YouTube, you like college football? You like the NFL? You like sports in general? Well, you're going to love this. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. Please keep sharing the show. We really appreciate it.